What's going on, guys? We're here with Paul Emick, our uh, very first Silverback Power sponsored athlete at the uh, Chris Fit uh, Personal Training Gym in Niagara Falls, New York. Uh, we did our first training session together today, and it was uh, went really well, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I know, especially I had a great workout, and watching Paul and Adam and uh, and his friend Steve as well. I think uh, Paul was pretty happy with his workout because it went really well. Yeah, so. thousand and what was it today? Thousand forty five was my top. Thousand forty five. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So I have a video of that coming soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was great. Um, so what got you into powerlifting? I first started training, uh, getting involved in bodybuilding. I uh, trained in that for a couple of years. Uh, ended up competing in, a, in an NGA bodybuilding show. I ended up placing first in the heavyweight class, right and on. I won the overall as well. Great. Uh, uh, through my bodybuilding training, I was training max OT style. So heavyweight, low reps, that's my foundation from day one. So yeah. Lifting heavy appealed to me, and I got a base for it pretty <laughs> yeah. early on. And yeah. uh, shortly after my bodybuilding competition, uh, a couple friends of mine were training in a group, mm -hmm. and I started hanging out with them and training with them, and I was hooked from the first time I went <laughs> to my friend's house. Yeah. First time I saw a monolift, first time I saw a guy squatting over 700 pounds, like, <laughs> this is what I was meant to do. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, never looked back, never will look back. What age did you start that bodybuilding and stuff? Was it high school? Uh, senior year of high school, I, uh, just before my 18th birthday is nice. when I first okay. started. So, you know, a little more than 10 years down the road. And <laughs> yeah, you're a thousand plus pounds now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it sounds like you had a good foundation right from the start. I was very fortunate where um, even through bodybuilding, I had intelligent guidance <laughs> from yeah. day one. So I was didn't end up making a lot of the stupid rookie mistakes a lot of people do. Yeah. In that and in powerlifting too, I had a great group of guys um, at my buddy Aaron's house, and you know, was a coach along the way. Trained with a couple awesome groups of guys, and uh, it makes makes a big difference. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, in terms of the environment that you lift in, I mean, uh, going from you know, say a good life or something like that, where it's a very like commercial gym franchise, and not a lot of people are lifting very by heavy. Yourself. Yeah, by yourself Versus. if you don't have a training partner, and then going to a gym you know that's tailored for powerlifting. And having those guys there, you know, like mm -hmm. cheering you on and giving you tips, I think that makes a big difference. It does. Uh, I always said from day one, you know, you make, you create your own success, but I agree with you 100%. Powerlifting is you against the weight, but if you don't have that support team behind you to yeah. help me get out of my gear or <laughs> give liftoffs and, you know, be able to critique you on your lifts and everything else like that, that's, you You need to have that. That's yeah. just as important Absolutely. as lifting the weight. So, yeah. 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 Totally agree. So how many years have you been into powerlifting, I guess? Because I know you said you started bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 2008 or 2009 okay. that I uh, kind of made the transition there and uh, competed in my first bench press competition. I think it was 2009, oh, yeah. I think. Okay. So. Yeah. How did that go? Uh, horrible. I found <laughs> <it out. laughs> uh, every year there's a red brick bench press competition okay. uh, that started out being held in Lewiston, New York, and then it's migrated to... Uh, Buffalo. Uh, for years, it's been the biggest bench-only bench press competition wow. on the eastern seaboard of the United wow. States, and uh, it's a fundraiser to raise money for um, military families. That's great. Awesome. And every year, there's uh, awards for fallen soldiers, for best lifter, and things like wow. that. They've yeah. raised, I can't even remember how much money, like tens of thousands of dollars. I think yeah. it was like over fifty grand. Wow. I think over awesome. the course of the time, and uh, yeah. they actually built a memorial in uh, Niagara Falls wow. for the uh, Iraqi veterans, I believe. So That's amazing. Yeah. it's done tremendous things. And my first meet there, didn't get a single lift. Oh, no. really? Eh? Yeah. No, it was uh, very bad. I, yeah, very bad experience. But a lot of times when you have that bad experience or you get knocked down, that's going to give you the fuel that you need yeah, to come back. Absolutely. And I've won first place in every single competition <laughs> I've done since then. There you go. So, so it's just the, the fuel for the fire. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What, did, what did you kind of learn from that failure? Like, what, like, did you pick your weight too high? Was it like, what was the? A lot. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, I definitely opened up too heavy. Yeah. Uh, heavier than I should have, and even, you know, going back and looking back, it's very hindsight is twenty twenty. And looking back <laughs> at Absolutely. the train that you did leading up to that, well, you know, I lost at the bottom. Well, what was I doing in my training to help prevent that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, that's why you bond. So don't do that again. <laughs> Every meet you do is a learning experience, and every time you're gonna pick something different that you need to work on. So, yeah, mm -hmm. constantly evolving. 
Yeah, and learning from past mistakes to make sure you don't do them again, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a lot of powerlifting in general <laughs> because you're constantly tweaking, constantly making sure that you're doing what you need to do to go past your weaknesses. Oh, yeah. In a perfect world, you would just train everything and everything would come up and that would be <laughs> it. But yeah. naturally, as one thing gets stronger, that's going to leave something else a little more. And you just have to you know, be very in tune with your body, be very in tune with your lifts. I keep a record of every single session I do, even my you know, deload sessions, my back off weeks, everything, yeah. every single rep. So you can take a look back at the last month, the last six months, and really be able to analyze where you're at now and go back and look at that. It's just like a nutrition program. If you're not detailing everything down to a T, it's going to be hard to diagnose exactly what you need yeah. to tweak with that. Yeah. yeah, you might miss something important that you, you know, could change you know, the impact that you have them at a meet or something, you know, exactly. it could, could mean missing a lift even. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that's a good point to be very analytical, analytical about it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Do you, so do you use that past training to then predict your next few weeks or do you plan, I pick a number six months ahead and then train, work your way back as far as your programming and stuff. With me, honestly, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> keeping track of everything that I'm doing. I, kind of have a game plan for the next month, the next two months out. Yeah. And while you also don't want to get too ahead of yourself and pick <laughs> numbers that are unrealistic, you have to pick short-term goals to get to those long-term goals Absolutely. too. But yeah. uh, if you don't ultimately have a goal that you want to achieve, then you know that'll help set those yep. goals in the midterm yeah. too. Yeah. Whether That's it's great. that 700-pound bench or that 1,000 squat or whatever <laughs> it is that you want. So Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, tell us about today's session. How did it go? Uh, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish today. Um, ended up working huge PR. That's the heaviest I've ever squatted. Hit 1,015 for a double reverse band and then hit 1045 for my top set. Uh, they weren't to depth. I know that. <laughs> I, I won't claim that, that they were, but that is how I've been able to make the best progressions in my squat is I'll take, you know, a high box or I'll take a reverse band or I, I purposely, I, I don't care how low I get as long as it's at least halfway down. So my body feels the weight yeah. mentally too. We were talking before yeah. knowing that you are actually physically able to handle that weight is going to help for that next time. And from here on out, if I can stay around the same weight, but take it deeper each time, yeah. take less, you know, straight weight next time too. Yeah. That for me has made the best progression. So just one step at a time. Week, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I think it shows. I mean, uh, not only are you incredibly focused, and I don't think, I mean, when Adam asked if you were intimidated about the weight, you know, I, I don't think that's even running through your head because you can see how, how aggressive and how, you know, it's focused you are yeah. on the weight. So I think that definitely shows, and uh, I think it plays a big part in your training just because you're so confident that you could do it and you know that it's just one little step at a time. And part of that will definitely be your training strategy. If you're training smart, then you know that as the next week will come, this is a step that you're taking. It's not going to be easy, but it's a, you're going to get it. Manageable. And yeah. the other part yeah. is just that mental side where nothing's going to stand in my way. Yeah. I don't care. I'm conquering this, and that's it. There's no questions about it. Yeah. If you have that fear, that's going to be in the back of your head the whole time. Absolutely. You can't no, hesitate, right? You there's no place for it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's what the sports or anything that carries through. I think any sort of hesitation or doubt in your mind, it's going to show through in your performance. So I think mm -hmm. you have to get rid of that. And the only way to do that though is to have a long history of successful, sustainable training. Yep. And if you're going above your means and hurting yourself repeatedly, then you're going to have that doubt. So it's mm -hmm. good to be smart about it. Yeah. So what's uh, what's the future hold for you right now? What are the next couple months look like? Well, planning on for my upcoming meet, I'm going to be getting back in gear. Mm -hmm. a lot more often from here on out. I've taken, taken the last like six months completely raw and I've made some really, really great steps to where I needed to go. I brought a lot of weak points up. I've been able to increase my, my lean body mass, my strength overall. So that's already translating into the last two weeks with when I shirt benched last week and squatting today felt, felt good. Mm -hmm. um, got some numbers in my head. I'm not going to throw that out right now, <laughs> but I definitely... And in the realm of hitting that. So I like to rotate usually two weeks in my gear, two weeks raw. I don't want to yeah. rely too much on that. You have to stay, you have to keep your base strong yeah. too. So. For sure. And like, what does next week look like for you after hitting 1045 today? Do you drop it way down or do you kind of keep building each week? 
Uh, generally, it'll keep building each week. Um, I run in two or three week waves, kind of. Yeah. I don't have anything set in stone in my training. I know right. a lot of programs, which I've done in the past, and sometimes if you have a super awesome week, you know, you might completely top out. Mm -hmm. And you might tap your body out of everything that it has, and you might not be able to increase from that next week. And then if you, well, your program says this, so this is what I have to do, and then you crash and burn, and then it takes you two weeks to recover from that, yeah. you just lost three weeks in your, yeah. you know, yeah. meat training cycle. <laughs> that's a big chunk of time. Yeah, I mean, I've made that mistake, and <laughs> that's why, like, I have a general game plan in two or three week waves, depending on how the training goes. I know by the second week if I'll be able to go on. This was my third heavy week this week. Mm -hmm. And I need to back down for a week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's important having kind of, uh, you know, keeping your body in mind and trying mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, you're pushing your limits, but you're not pushing so far that you, you know, take yourself out of the game for three weeks. And I think that's a big part of it as well. Whether you miss a lift, strain a muscle, or, you know, injure yourself significantly. I mean, I've even had times where there was the one meet in particular, I was a week out mm -hmm. and not training intelligently and I was taking two plates I think and I pulled my back so bad I had to pull out of the meat Oof, really yeah that's rough <laughs> I'm a a, frustrated for something as yeah. unintelligent as that mm -hmm. so you need to take the time you need to learn your body and know how your body recovers and just need to train smart there's nothing yeah how did you like? How did you start? Did you start out trying a bunch of different programs, or did you have your friends kind of just through your, them coaching you? Was like how did you pick your programming or your workouts and a stuff? A little bit of all of it. Um, when I first started training, the guys I was training with were following like a, a West Side split, and that worked really well for a long time. Yeah. Um, and got to a point where, for me, doing two bench days, even though one day was dynamic day, you know, my shoulders weren't recovering. I was having a lot of pain, so I cut that out. Mm -hmm. um, more recently, I've been sticking to the uh, Brian Carroll's 1020 Life program right. principles, and that's I've been doing that for a long time, and it's been going phenomenal because there's the flexibility in that, moving in the waves, keeping yourself, you know, deloading or backing down before you get to that point. So yeah. you might not progress as fast initially as you're going, but you're going to have a lot longer stretches where you're injury free. So in the yeah. long run, over that six months, you've actually you know, you've gained how many more weeks your training sessions or pounds too. Yeah. I mean, it translates yeah. in, into all that. Mm -hmm. But you also need to take time and customize whatever program you're doing to yourself. Is the textbook West Side or is the textbook whatever program going to work for you just the same as it's going to work for you? Is the same as going to work for me? No. Yeah. Odds are no. There's going to be, you know, you might have a better bench, you might have a better squat, or you might just not recover as well. So you yeah. have to take the time to learn as well, not try and jump from one program to, well, this didn't work for me. You did it for a month. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but basically just to answer again, I mean, I've been following the 10-20 life principles, and that's, I've been doing that for the longest amount of consecutive time, and that's been working great for me. So, right. yeah. Yeah, so you might as well stick to it, right? <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Yeah. Well, it's like Ronnie Coleman's been doing the same back workout for 20 years, I think I heard, right? And he's, you know, so I was like, yeah, if it's, it's not it's he's broken. Pretty, he's pretty like, vague. Yeah, I mean, he's you know, doing he's something like, right. He's all right. Well, <laughs> so that speaks to if something's working, just to continue on with it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you, yeah, if you start to plateau or whatever, then it's time to change things up. But if not, just keep grinding out. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so now that we're all done with uh, today's session, um, are you going to take a rest day tomorrow? Or are you going to get back into it? And what do you think you're going to be doing? Sunday's bench day. All right. It's a big day. So, <laughs> do you have like a lower body day? Because I know you did de bed, uh, deadlift and uh, squat today, so you're going to do bench and overhead press tomorrow? Yep. Or is that, um, yeah. It'll be, I try, if I, my weekends with my work schedule are when I have the time to right. spend more time in the gym so I can get the heavy lifts and spend a couple hours like I want to. So, if I train heavy on Saturday, I need to back down a little bit on Sunday mm -hmm. and vice versa. So if I want to bench heavy, then I'm not going to squat and deadlift, yeah. you know, to max yeah. effort at that point. But uh, tomorrow will be some raw work, um, get some volume in. Went heavy last week, and I went real, <laughs> real heavy today. So <laughs> that'll be about it. Any four days a week? Five? Uh, I train four days a week. Uh, generally get the meat and potatoes out on Saturday and Sunday, and then have one day during the week where I get, like, speed lower body work and like back accessories in and yeah. then kind of like a 
bench accessory day, but it ends up being more like shoulders and triceps for the most part. So. Yeah. Okay. But. Great. With your, I guess, sort of hindsight and you have a long tenured lifting career, is there anything, and you also have friends, I guess, to kind of make sure you didn't make any mistakes, but are there any rookie mistakes that they helped you avoid that you're happy about that you can maybe tell other people to avoid, or is there any mistakes you did, you did make that you wish you wouldn't have? Don't get greedy <laughs> with the weight. That's nine times out of ten, anytime I've gotten hurt or tweaked something. I mean, we're guys. Yeah. Powerlifting is an alpha male sport. That's the way it <laughs> yeah. is. It's not just powerlifting, but especially with that. So listening to your training partner or just knowing when to back off and be smart yeah. about the situation. <laughs> well, uh, that squat really didn't go very good. Ah, I can sweep 10 more pounds out. Nah, I can get an, throw another quarter on there. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> and not so much with myself, but I've seen a lot of people too in powerlifting getting into, uh, I know raw powerlifting is a lot more popular, a lot more publicized and everything mm -hmm. right now, but not getting in gear too soon too. I've yeah. seen a lot of people have no business putting on a bench shirt. If you can't, bench your own weight even or if you can't even lift 200 pounds yeah. what do you think a, any yeah. piece of equipment is going to do if you can't unrack 500 pounds no amount of briefs knee wraps or anything else is going to actually do you anything you yeah. have to have yeah, a base good strength. solid base down or you're going to get hurt couldn't agree more yeah and the other thing would be your nutrition eating too the, the stereotypical power lifter diet is <laughs> eat big and get big yeah. but if you're not paying attention to what you're eating, that just goes in sync with your training too. If you can't, if you're not eating enough protein, if you're not eating enough carbs to feed yourself, but more than you need, you're gonna get <laughs> yeah. a little too fat, too, too <laughs> much of a power belly at that point too. And well, it affects your mobility and stuff, right? And oh can, yeah. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. I went through a period where I was gaining a lot of weight when I was training and competing raw, and I let myself get up to about 335 pounds. I don't have a giant frame, and it got to the point where I literally had to like take a breath, put my f foot on a chair, hold it, tie my shoe real quick, and then <laughs> and then do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so you cut three inches off your stroke on your bench press, but is that really going to be very good for you? Yeah. It's not good for your health. It's not good for your cardiovascular. We're trying to do squats. I'm trying to do more than three. I imagine was like devastating. Oh my God. I, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't. yeah. I didn't. Well, it's like uh, it's like Mark Bell. I mean, he he used to be around three ten or so, yeah. and he's been cutting down. And, mm -hmm. and I think he's he's a, he's, a, he's a big advocate of uh, keto as well. And I think yep. you've uh, had some experience with that. Yeah, I thought, um, you know we talked about carb backloading with uh, what Kiefer outlined, and that's exactly what I did. And I followed that program to a T. Um, and it worked wonders. I mm -hmm. actually like I dropped down from three thirty five. I got down to my lowest at two twenty five. Wow. I dropped, dropped 110 pounds, yeah. which was significant. I did lose a little bit of strength at that point, but I got myself down and was able to keep a lot leaner as my body weight started coming back right. up. And uh, it's funny, I actually emailed uh, his company with like before and after pictures. Just wanted to say, you know, this program has been working phenomenal. This is, you know, a picture of me getting my knees wrapped at this weight and here's a picture of me two years later down this weight doing this and they actually responded back like we didn't believe your story until we saw the pictures yourself. That's I mean, outrageous. And that's, I could tell you what I ate three years ago to a T. I could yeah. tell you what my macros were, what my meals were, I've been doing it for so long and it's a little hardwired kind of from bodybuilding too but if you want to be successful, nutrition is just as important as your training. You have to have all that dialed in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you're not, then how are you going to take it to the next level? How are you going to dial your squat in if every other piece of the puzzle isn't in too? It doesn't yeah. make any sense, but a lot of people do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to eat like you're a bodybuilder. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We want to and, minimize yeah. as many variables as there are too, right? So if you go mm -hmm. and you miss a lift, but you don't know if your macros are on point, you don't know if you're sleeping enough, you don't know if your training's right, you're not tracking any of this, you don't know where to fix it, you don't know where to start. Yeah. But if you know right. for sure my food's on point, I'm sleeping eight hours a day, okay, it must be my training. Now I can just focus on that section and you know get after it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something, but I forgot. That's all right. Um, oh, yeah. So I know from hearing like Mark Bell talk, um, he used to track his macros a lot, and now he doesn't really bother just because over time he's he knows kind of what a proportion is or how much is 
you know, and you've been doing this for 10 years, mm. do you kind of know now what you're eating and like how much it is or do you still like really closely track it? I, I still track it just because I like yeah. <laughs> knowing that, but I know exactly what I'm eating. I know exactly yeah. how much, I mean, I still weigh my chicken. I still measure my, <laughs> you know, rice and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, I could do it with my eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, when, once you've gotten to that point too, you know, well, if my weight's up a little bit or I need to cut for a meat or anything like that, it's so e like I could drop 10 pounds without losing anything yeah. like that. Or if mm -hmm. I want to, you know, gain 10 pounds for a you know heavy squat day, I can do that too because mm -hmm. you you have the consistency and I just, it does, it becomes yeah. second nature yeah. for you. You know how to manipulate it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I think that's an important part because uh, I know maybe outs even outside of powerlifting, there's a lot of people that don't really understand the concept of, of nutrition, mm -hmm. something as simple as, um, you know, eating properly. Um, and it, you know, it makes even a bigger difference in powerlifting. Like Adam said, and you've said as well, you need to balance everything. Yep. So I think that it's, it's good to, you know, even if you've been tracking for 10 years, well, you've done it for that long. So why don't you keep doing it just to make sure that you're, you know, you're still doing the right thing. I still want to make progressions. I still want to move forward. So you still need to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And obviously everyone's different. So nutrition's not always going to be the same, but can you talk about a couple points of what you do to lose 10 pounds versus what you do to gain 10 pounds and like what, how that works for you? Focusing with the carb backloading, it's, it's really easy to do. Again, you need to know where your numbers need to be. Yeah. And even with that, it's it really is about your macros. I mean, making right. smart food choices. I mean, I still eat lean, lean meat, chicken, rice, potatoes. I eat, you know, the only guilty pleasure I have really is cereal. I mean, <laughs> cereal and yeah. Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got to have the Pop-Tarts. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you're, you know, looking to drop and you're cutting your carbs, making up for the fat and the difference in your calories, you... Dropping your calories too low is what people do a lot of times when they're trying to drop weight or drop water. So you cut 100 carbs out, and that's 400 calories, and you're not making that up somewhere. Yeah. You know, you're going to start to crash and burn at that point. You're going right. to lose muscle. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to have crappy workouts, and it just all yeah. yep. it's a vicious cycle. Rolls down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, knowing how your body responds to that, which yeah. takes time and learning and tracking and everything else, and mistakes. <laughs> Lots of mistakes. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that is kind of prescribed in backloading at least is, you know, it's advertised as pizza, donuts, and stuff like that. And the first 10 days that you're doing that, you abstain from all carbs. Go completely ketogenic at that point. And then my first carb night that I had, I ate like half a pizza and, I don't know, like eight donuts or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, went to a local farm. They had apple cider donuts. It was October. There you and go. Oh man, it was great. <laughs> and when I was 15 pounds heavier the next morning, I mean, <laughs> you have to <laughs> yeah. expect that, you know, with if you're carb depleted when you're eating carbs, you know, with the sodium and everything like that, you are going to rebound yeah. and gain some, mm -hmm. you know, some water weight, but 15 pounds is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still did similar stuff like that for a long time. Then once I actually cleaned up the food, you have to feed the machine. I mean, if you're feeding it garbage. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? Exactly. Sure. That's why I started leaning out a lot better. I started feeling better. I was having better sessions too. So yeah, I don't care what I eat. If it's <laughs> fueling me to do what I want to do, that's what I want to eat. Yeah. yeah. Simple as that. Oh yeah. So, Definitely. Yeah. How do you, um, through being, doing this for 10 years, I know we're in university right now and a lot of our friends say, we all, we don't have time to go to the gym. We don't have time. Uh, it's like we have this assignment or we have this always going on. How have you found time over the last 10 years to do it? Obviously, it's a priority, something you love to do. So, you... If you want it bad enough, you're going to do it. Yeah. And if you're not willing to do it, then you don't want it bad enough. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's been a while since I've been in that situation. But like when I was in high school, I was, it was my senior year of high school. I was taking classes at two different colleges and working yeah. two jobs. I did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I moved away for a while for work. And uh, I was working seven days a week, sometimes 18, 20-hour days. I got it in. Yeah. I wanted it. And mm -hmm. there's no secret to it. You want it or you don't. Yeah. And that's it. And if you're complaining that you don't have the time and this and that, I mean, you might have to be flexible with your schedule, but don't complain to me then. Yeah. Do you think the, you know, Mark Bell or do you think 
any of the top or 13 yeah, characters. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the shit he's done in his life. Like, this guy had just free time always to, like, work out. Like, there's no way. No. Right? You, you want to be a champion. You want to be successful. What you do, you do what it takes. Yeah. And any complaining or excuses, you don't want it, and that's it. Stop complaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's it's all up here, and you don't, so have, you don't have the mindset you need. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. it's as simple as that. Yeah. And there's always going to be that assignment, whether it's, you know, or actually a kid, or there's always going to be, like, life's not going to get less busy as you get older, right? There's oh. always going to be more responsibility. And at our age, we have, like, probably the least responsibility you could possibly have, <laughs> realistically, and it's only going to get harder for us. So if we're not making time for it now, you're not going to make time for it later, Oh, right? yeah, like, I, I so. don't have kids yet, but you're going to have, oh, man, okay, I'm getting out of work. Oh, you're not getting out of work. Uh, you're working overtime. You don't know when you're getting out of work. <laughs> Am I gonna let that make me miss a meal? Yeah, right. No, you can't. No, always have extra food with you. You have to plan for your goals, and you know there are things in life that you can't predict that are out of your yeah. control. Yeah. But you can be smart enough to prepare for that, so it's not going to derail you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what it takes. So that's what you do. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's true. Words have not been spoken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a great way to put it. Well. Um, I think that's uh, as many questions as uh, we wanted to ask. But yeah. uh, thanks again for having us out here. Um, thanks, Chris Fit, for uh, you know hosting us here. This is an amazing facility. Um, if you're in the Niagara Falls region, check it out. Um, they could have they have probably every piece of equipment you can imagine or even want to use. Yep. Um, they got a mono lift. Uh, so yeah, come out, check it out. It's a great place to lift. Yeah, we'll link it in the description. Yeah, maybe you'll run into Paul too. Um, <laughs> yeah, so thanks again. Appreciate yes. it. Yeah. Have a great time, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll out. come back down again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right on. Cool. Thanks. I got a crib in LA and a crib in AZ. The way I be putting shit down on the motherfucking brakes. I feel like Muhammad Ali. Down goes Frazier. I'm the motherfucking brakes. I feel like